in 2006, I was invited to write the history of the college. Uh, as I have a general interest in the history of Belfast and the history of industries in Belfast, um, it was a marvellous opportunity to put them into context and it's quite remarkable how the college was at the very centre of technological change and industry in Belfast. Now about the foundry itself, as far as I'm aware there was never a foundry actually in the college until 1962, but it didn't need one because from the very beginning the first principal, Francis Forth, made it very very clear that the college would actually work with industry. So that meant that if on-spot training was to happen, it would happen in the shipyards and in various other bodies. Now what that meant was with foundry work, which is very, very hands-on, what would happen would be that students would go out on day release to say places like, now the one I do know of is Coombe Barber on the Falls Road. Now Coombe Barber, if you look at the old maps of Belfast, it was an absolutely massive, massive uh, foundry in the Lower Falls area. It even had its own railway, which ran up and down the streets. It was kind of a tramway just for industrial use. Now students would go there to be trained, maybe two or three days a week. It was a day release thing, and day release only came in in the 1950s. Now I suspect very strongly that when it came to it, they put the foundry into the college because those foundries were beginning to close down in the late 50s, early 60s, as Belfast industries began to change. The foundry was set up in 1962 by a chap called uh, Ernie Nelson. Ernie uh, was a uh, foundry manager in the Horn and Wolf and left Horn and Wolf in 1962 to set up the foundry in Millfield. Uh, his main aim was to supply a service to local industries, local foundries such as Coombe Barber, that Henry mentioned, uh, James Mackey and Sons, uh, Davison's, uh, Horn and Wolf of course. He provided a service in pattern making, mould making, all the technical knowledge, materials, information that foundry technicians uh, would require to complete their work. Uh, that continued during the 60s and 70s and then in the late 80s, uh, Montepay came and set up their die casting foundry in uh, Dunmurray and again Ernie was instrumental in doing the training for uh, all their uh, new employees. Uh, also then in 1996, uh, Ryobi Aluminium Castings, uh, they set up their European base in uh, Carrickfergus and again Ernie uh, was set up a training programme for all their uh, employees. Uh, I continued that work on when Ernie, when Ernie retired in 1996. Originally it was in the old millfield site, they had to go through the boiler house, down a, a flight of steps, so we were actually in the basement of the uh, old building uh, and that's where Ernie would have plied his trade for 35 years and then uh, at the beginning of 2002-2003 uh, the foundry transferred into this new facility that we're sitting in at the minute and this is brilliant because we're at ground level uh, we can see daylight, we can see the Black Mountain from where I'm sitting at the moment. Uh, so it's, uh, it's been a big change for us and we've also since that time uh, diversified into the arts sector. A lot of our art students now would use the foundry facilities. In uh, 2007 uh, the foundry went uh, semi-commercial so we uh, use the facilities here to offer that service to uh, private and uh, public bodies uh, to make unusual castings. Some of the ones you've probably seen around the countryside, we did the Luck Penny down at Ralph Ryland. It was probably the biggest casting that we've ever made. At the minute now we're working on a bronze sculpture for the Derry Stroke London Derry City of Culture. Uh, so the mix at the minute now would probably be about 50% uh, uh, engineers, 50% uh, art students. Uh, for example, we get a lot of engineers from Queen's University using the foundry, uh, level one, level two, uh, mechanical engineers, aeronautical engineers, product designers. Uh, they would all come down from Queen's to use the facility here. Uh, along with a lot of art students, our own foundation art and design course, uh, they would use the foundry, uh, along with the, our own engineering courses at the college. Before I came to this course, I had been a practicing blacksmith, so I was quite um, familiar with working in um, iron, and I found this course beneficial, um, uh, giving me the opportunity to work in the, the foundry. 
it helped me progress with my skills in the, the lost wax process. I uh, discovered new ways of patternation and uh, really gave me the confidence to, to use a more traditional uh, method of sculpture. This is based on feathers and um, it was made first of all out of a foam mould and then taken through in the bronze casting procedure and the whole point of it was to try and get something delicate to translate into something so heavy and solid. As part of my studies I find this has given me a very good opportunity to try something that most people don't have the opportunity to try and it helps boost my portfolio at the same time as giving me a chance to work with some artists and manufacturers. Well this piece is based on uh, collections, mostly based on a computer board, a circuitry board, which I've made. I've cut in the parts and made very modular so I can move the pieces about, get some good light and some good interest in shadows. I was very much interested in being able to make different kinds of shapes. Um, be this being the one and only time I've actually ever had to use the foundry, I thought I may as well make the most of it. The, the foundry is just a fantastic thing for us to have here and the, the staff involved are so committed and creative that even though a lot of their work would be for more, I suppose, industrial kind of work that they do with companies and with queens, whenever it comes to encouraging the creativity of these young people in foundation art and design. They're a tremendous team and we owe a lot to them. Foundries are very, very important because without them you don't have the basic raw materials of the metal industries. And Belfast, a hundred years ago, sixty years ago even, was full of the metal industries. Think of names like Musgraves, think of names like James Mackey and Son and Coombe Barber. Very, very important for the industry of the city. But it went beyond that. There was an art in it as well. I mean, things like the lost wax method and things. Not that I'm an expert on this, but it is unbelievable the amount of technological skills that go into making these. So really, from that kind of thing of linking in with art through to linking in with industries, a foundry is a very, very important um, piece of equipment. We are retired teachers, and we are getting into the business of how could we cast in bronze. So we discover that there's a facility in the tech, we go to Ken and the thing takes off again. Mostly people who have been professionals in some other sense of the word, but with this, these artistic skills. And from that all of this has developed. Mm. And, and now Ken has produced uh, a couple of subsidiary uh, uh, bronze places uh, like what we do here. But it's not, it's just for our, it's for our own affectation. But it's great fun and very entertaining and a lot of people are learning new skills, learning to know that if you inquire and go to Cairn and you want to produce, you have a facility. Go back to 1952, that was just, just wasn't, just wasn't about. Whereas previously people were coming along, model engineers, car enthusiasts, etc. would come along to get, do parts, cast parts. There was also a group who uh, were making medieval weapons, uh, so their background was completely different to, to ours. So there was a, it became a variety, whereas previously it had been, uh, as I say, bits for, for tractors and motor cars and vintage cars and the like. Uh, it tended to become artistic and artistic foundry. And, uh, uh, very successful. We still use the equipment that Ernie bought in 1962. Uh, that's one of the benefits of a foundry. The sand that you see behind me that was bought in 1962 by Ernie, so it's still used today. The moulding boxes that I'm looking at on the left here, they were bought by Ernie in 1962 and still used today. And the furnace to my left here, uh, it was bought in 1962 and still used today. So uh, it doesn't cost much to set up a foundry. Uh, it doesn't take much to run a foundry. Uh, a lot of our students now have set up their own foundry. So that's, uh, that's part of our aim is to encourage a regeneration of the foundry industry. Because during the 70s, as I say, uh, a lot of foundries closed around Belfast. Most of that work are, went to the Far East. So it's our aim to uh, regenerate the foundry industry in Northern Ireland. That would be our primary objective. Um, so we're basically carrying on the legacy that Ernie has left us.